something different this morning no biker news or any of that kind of stuff today i want to talk about my favorite subject and that's motorcycles and hopefully it's your favorite subject as well i wanted to know i really did how harley became an iconic brand that is often right aside freedom independence passion how did it become that how did it become associated with them three things 119 years as of uh 2022 if my math's right because my english is usually not right so hopefully the math is 119 years ago a company basically started with what we see today. You see those little V twin 80 CCs on these little bicycles. That's how they started. That's basically what they were. And it was just a couple guys, Arthur Davidson, Walter Davidson and William Harley that made this company into what it is today. I often wonder back then if they knew just how big their company would get as far as brand recognition, as far as the trust a lot of writers put into the brand, and what it meant to a whole subculture altogether. They probably didn't start out thinking that was what's going to go on they probably wanted to build a good product because indian was already out there out of massachusetts and they wanted to compete it was a business when you think of harley the first thing that comes to everyone's mind when you talk about it has to be the engine the rumble the growl hell that's why uh, Harley Davidson wanted to uh, trademark that sound. Because let's face it, all the other manufacturers have tried to copy Harley with the V-Twin style. Hell, you don't even know if you're back, you know, a few thousand feet. If you look at a bike, if it's a Harley or not, unless you see, you know, the horn placements and stuff and the style of the engine fins. But it's become so much entrenched in the american psyche that it is a special type of product it really is it has become that badge of freedom that all bikers talk about how did it get that way after world war ii it wasn't like everybody was saying you needed a harley to be a biker no, they were riding around all on these allied, you know, allied from World War II motorcycles. Royal Enfields, Triumphs, hell. In England, you had the cafe racer scene with Triumphs and all the British bikes. When it come back to the States, though, I'd have to say the cost back then was very reliable as far as not paying an arm and a leg if you know what i mean where today it's a lot harder but with it being a lot higher does that give you more prestige in the biker community because you got to admit the first thing anybody asks tell me if i'm wrong the first thing they always ask is what kind of bike you have. And if you say something other than Harley, you can tell that with the different facial expressions what they're thinking. Oh, you don't got a Harley? Well, you know, it just costs a house mortgage nowadays. <laughs> okay? But in the day where you actually had to have a toolkit to work on the damn thing, it wasn't so expensive. You know, you go back to the shovel heads, iron heads, 
you had to work on them damn bikes. And you had to work on them a lot. So, of course, they weren't as popular then than they are now. I don't think it was, what, until the Evo came out that they really started getting popular with everybody as a whole. Now, the old scooter tramps, they'd ride them. They didn't care about working on it. Dirty, greasy bikers, is that's where it came from because they were always working on their bikes. But when the Evo came along, they got more reliable and opened the scene up a lot more. And then the later editions, twin cams, all that kind of stuff, it was out the gates. I think the Evo has to be the point in time where Harley Davidson really took off to the masses and they caught on to what it was to just jump on a bike, go where you want to go, go wherever the asphalt was, dirt roads, wherever, it lets you just go. It was a whole different experience than jumping in a car. Is Harley a big, bold statement? I'd have to say, yeah. I'd have to say, yeah. No matter how many bikes I had, and I've had a lot of them, I've always had a Harley in that garage. Always. Even though I have a Boulevard and a Harley, I ride my Boulevard a lot more, I guess. But I still have to have that Harley in the garage. Because it was a part of who I am. It is a part of who I am. And I remember what it brought to me when I first jumped on one. Like I said, the engine, the ride, uh, people turning their heads when you rode by with them pipes blaring, man. How you got noticed. And I'm sure you get that feeling as well if you just got your first Harley. It's something amazing that you really can't put into words. It's kind of like a decision that reveals who you are. It really does. It tells the world, hey, I'm living life on my own terms. I'm doing what I need to do to be happy in my life. And it doesn't matter what you think. That has to be one trait of a serious biker. Now, a lot of people can call on South Biker, whatever, you'd have that debate. But a serious biker believes 100% doing it the way they want to do. They don't want anybody telling them what's up. They're not going to sit there and take BS, any of that crap. No. They're going to do it their own way. Kind of like Frank Sinatra, baby. And that machine embodies that attitude. You have to admit it does. Even if you don't ride a Harley, you have to admit that's what that bike says. Doing it my way. We don't care what you think. If you say otherwise, I don't know what the hell is wrong. And it's that machine. That machine that has brought so many like-minded individuals together. Alpha males, if you will. Keep the politics out of the clubs, but at a lot of club stuff, they're centered around the motorcycle. And most clubs are centered around a Harley. Now, I have to say, Indians becoming real popular now. They got to get their dealer network together. If they do that, then maybe 
just maybe they'll start building out uh, a dedicated fan base like Harley Davidson has. But until then, you're always going to have that community that is based around that motorcycle. Come on. What other brand in the world, what other brand in the world gets millions upon millions upon millions of dollars of free advertising each year? That could mean the tattoos people get, the t-shirts they wear. You know what I mean. That's how loyal a lot of bikers are to Harley Davidson, even though we might not like the company, but we like the product. Now, it's been harder and harder to support Harley Davidson the last few years because of management stuff. We also have to remember that it is a business and they got to do what they got to do to make money for their shareholders. At the same time, though, we, uh, we expect the company to try to replace some of that loyalty that we showed them. Again, millions of, mon millions of dollars each year they get in free advertising. They are the most well-known brand in the world as far as motorcycling is concerned. 50%, 50% of the big bike market has a Harley Davidson bar and shield on it. They are struggling with the lower CC stuff, as you can see with the different type of uh, innovations they're trying to come out. One thing they should have left alone was that damn sporty, okay? The new sporty, doesn't do it for me, but hey, that bike isn't marketed towards my age. It's more marketed towards the younger crowd. It's a hybrid. It's like a V-Rod had sex with the sports there, okay? So they're trying to innovate to the change in times, and us older guys might not like it, but hey, they got to do what they got to do. Man, I didn't even notice that right there. I have to move that crab over. There we go. Got my uh, Harley, or <laughs> my logo out there is all messed up. But anyway, anyway. The future of Harley, a couple years didn't look so bright. But I think that Al Bundy, the shoes, uh, shoe salesman, he's done a pretty good job. He's actually got it to where I guarantee in a couple of years they'll have waiting lists because that's what happened in 94. They took off bikes off the showroom floor, up their price, and got the waiting list going. They hyped it. And I think that's what they're doing now because they're pulling inventory and stuff from the dealerships. They're constricting or condensing the dealership network now. Which, hey, might be a good uh, decision, but they're going to have to keep up technology-wise because that's what people want. They don't want to have to carry a freaking bunch of tools and break down at, on the side of the road fixing their bike. Those days are gone. Everybody wants to be able to just ride and go. Oh, it broke down. Okay, well, let's plug it in and see what's wrong with it. And one thing about that is, that kind of stinks, man. Even though you were mad that it broke down, you were still like, this is awesome sitting in the garage, working on the bike, talking crap with your friends. It's not like that much anymore. And maybe that it's, uh, that's affected brotherhood in a way. Sure, you got guys that still love building bikes. But when it was, let's get off on a run, pull into the garage because you had something shake loose and you got oil all over the place. 
and you just sit there, have a beer, and all that good stuff. That's missed. Why do you think Harley's become so iconic? It'd be very interesting to hear your comments on this. Why do you think Harley's become so iconic? And it's always been attached with freedom, passion, the eagle. Nothing says freedom more than an eagle, baby. So let me know your guys' thought. I'm going to go to the second half of the show right now with China now. Man, we've been having some serious topics lately over on the, the second half of Motorcycle Madhouse. Boy, have we. We'll be right back after this music break. <laughs> 